Friends, good morning and welcome to another edition of SPTV News Live, where we keep you up to date on the latest shenanigans in the criminal cult of Scientology. And man, have there been some shenanigans since the uh, since the last update on this particular case. So what we're going to be covering today, and it's a perfect example of what Leah Remini can expect in her civil lawsuit against the cult, what the Jane Doe's can expect in their civil lawsuit against Danny Masterson, because this is the playbook that Scientology uses playing out in real time against one of the Jane Doe's who's suing Sea Orger, alleged groomer, Gavin Potter. So I know it could get complex. I just spit out three cases. So we have covered this in the past, but let me show you, um, let me show you what this case is about because it's hard to keep track. And there's been several developments, which, which like I said, are the playbook for how the cult works, as you're going to see in today's, um, in today's breakdown. And it's a little complex. So if there's any questions or if you're not understanding anything or when we get to the end of it, if you still don't know what the hell's going on, please ask. It's not complex, but there's a lot that we're going to cover here. There's a lot of reading. I'm going to show you a video of an interview that I did with Tony Ortega kind of predicting this stuff. And I there's a sequence to go in where it's going to be tricky to kind of um, bounce around, but hopefully this will make sense. So let's get into it. So Scientology is revealing its long range strategy against Jane Doe number one forced marriage lawsuit. And as mentioned before, we covered this last month. And this video, it'll be linked in the description box as well as everything we talk about here like usual after the video publishes. This is Jane Doe One's lawsuit under fire. Scientology attempts religious arbitration strategy. That was the last thing that they attempted against her and there's new developments. So what the hell is this case about before we even get into this? And let me throw you guys over here to say hi. How you guys doing today, man? Any, all right. Everybody's saying hello to everybody else. We still don't have a moderator, but um, I guess we're going to go moderator less until uh, until there's a need to do otherwise. So what the hell is this case about? In this case, it's Jane Doe number one. And by the way, she's the she's one of the uh, um, victims of Danny Masterson that was raped and uh, had the bravery and fortitude to come forward and um, help to cause Danny to be spending uh, life in prison right now. So this, in this case, it's Jane Doe number one in her lawsuit against the cult of Scientology, the elf Miscavige and Sea Org recruiter slash alleged groomer as covered in previous videos, Gavin Potter. And that was unsealed in June of this year. And in December of last year is when it was actually filed. And this suit accuses Scientology of forcing Jane Doe one to marry Potter that would be Gavin Potter, after he sexually assaulted her when she was still a minor. And she alleges that any sexual contact she had with them subsequently over the years 1991 to 1997, she considered non-consensual. She then left the Sea Org, but not Scientology, and she was close friends with Lisa Marie Presley, RIP, and more casually acquainted with Danny Masterson. And as we know, on May 31st, a jury found that Masterson had had, in fact, raped Jane Doe number one in the early hours of April 25th, 2003. And we also know that the jury convicted him on another count of forcible rape. And on September 7th, he was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole in 25.5 years. But this lawsuit is about the allegations about Gavin Potter that occurred several years before the Masterson attack. And it's not a criminal case, it's a civil lawsuit, which requires that Jane Doe 1 actually try to find the midget to serve in papers that notify him that he's a defendant. That's part of what we're going to be covering too, um, her attempts to try to actually serve this guy. It's madness. Other former Scientologists suing the cult have found this a difficult task. That's an understatement. As the elf hides behind an elaborate barrier of security guards and locked facilities. So um, we have in multiple cases that plaintiffs have tried to serve Miscavige through substitute service, giving the cult. Okay, that's good enough on, on this, I believe, just to get a backstory, because we're going to get into the actual serving of him later. Um, but that's a backstory on this particular civil case. So just to make sure you guys understand so far, this is Jane Doe number one suing Gavin Potter um, over being forced into marriage after he allegedly raped her. And after that, when she was still in Scientology, she says that all of the sex that happened after that was non-consensual and she's suing him in a civil case. Okay. Does that make sense so far? Hopefully. 
So we're going to get to the serving and we're going to get to the religious arbitration bullshit. Um, there's an update on that. And let's start with this, which is the original article breaking down this entire case. And now, oh, actually, that's not quite correct. Hang on a second. I knew I was going to lose track of all this. Okay. Hang on a second, please, while I find the proper, I have so many tabs open to try to make sense of this. Okay. Stand by. Okay, so this is in regards to the first tab that I showed you of the long range strategy against Jane Doe. And here we go. This really is their playbook. So if you want to know what's going to happen and is already happening in Leah's suit and the Jane Doe's against Masterson, this is textbook right here. And you'll start to see why the court system is set up to kind of favor Scientology's tactics. So we told you it was pretty predictable that Scientology would respond to Jane, Doe one, Jane Doe's one's forced marriage lawsuit by digging up a contract she signed in 2002 that they say obliges her to take her case to the cult's own internal religious arbitration. We've talked about that before, and that's basically they don't get real justice and they have to handle it in Scientology's world within a world rigged, quote, justice system. Jane Doe one fired back with a lengthy account of why the 2002 contract should not be considered valid. And we expect the fight over that question will consume this lawsuit for the time being. <laughs> and check this out. This is how they delay. Scientology wants a lawsuit put on hold just because of the, you know, until they determine this religious arbitration, whether it's valid or not, until next May when the motion on arbitration can actually be addressed. Talk about the wheels of justice moving slowly, ma'am. It totally plays in favor of the cult. Scientology is in the habit of throwing such roadblocks at lawsuits filed by former members. In Leah Remini's case, for example, and we covered this last week, the church said it will be filing an anti-slap motion next week. When Scientology, files an, when Scientology filed an anti-slap motion in Monique Rathburn's 2013 harassment lawsuit, it held up the case for more than an entire year. That's why they filed that lawsuit that we covered last week. When it seems like a long shot, it's more whether it works or not to hold up the freaking case for like a year. Scientology has also talked about filing an anti-slap motion in the Bixler lawsuit. That's the one that we mentioned where, um, well, that's Danny Masterson's uh, victims, the Jane Doe's that are suing for alleged fair gaming that began 2017 when the LAPD began, began looking into the allegations all the way up to present time. So that's probably what they're going to do in that civil suit. And again, we have a video where I asked Tony about that many months ago, and he kind of predicted all this. And now in a footnote and an obligatory document, the church was required to file this week, we get a glimpse of even more roadblock roadblocks it plans to throw at the Jane Doe one lawsuit and this might also provide a preview of what Leah Remini can expect in hers so before we get into this latest roadblock there's been other developments too that involve the aforementioned religious arbitration strategy that Jane Doe is now fighting back since we gave you a last update on that Jane Doe 1 denies validity of arbitration contract, opposes Scientology stay request. So just to keep track of this, we had the original um, problem of Scientology trying to delay this, whether it'll work or not, by throwing this lawsuit into religious arbitration. You're going to hear now a latest update on Jane Doe fighting back and how she's countering that. We have the cult um, probably going to file an anti-slap as you're going to see at the end of this we have her which we're going to show you trying to track down david miscavige apparently he hasn't been served yet because he makes it impossible and then um so that's what we have going on so far just to hopefully keep track of what we're talking about here so this is the contract that's being disputed this is what it looks like and it's just this ridiculous contract that basically makes you a slave to scientology and makes it so you can be thrown into their religious arbitration. So Jane Doe's, Jane Doe One's lawsuit against Scientology, which was unsealed in June, contains some horrendous allegations, as we mentioned before, of sexual abuse of a minor and forced marriage. But once again, Scientology has pulled out its favorite legal strategy. 
<clears throat> and is trying to derail the lawsuit in favor of, quote, religious arbitration. We told you on September 22nd that Scientology had not only asked the court to force the case into arbitration, but also put the lawsuit on hold until next, next May. So Jane Doe's come firing back. She's saying rightfully so. It's ridiculous to put the case on ice that long. And she goes into great length about why the contract she signed in 2002 should be considered invalid. For one thing, she says her signature might be on it, but no one from Scientology ever added their signatures. But more than that, she goes into a lengthy story about how she had gone to Scientology's flag land base at that time with her very good friend, Lisa Marie Presley. And she was asked to sign the paper merely to keep staying there with their friend and not to get any religious services. That's, that's key in this. So <laughs> we're going to include the entire argument about that from the lawsuit to show you how infuriating it is that Scientology forces its members into these ridiculous situations. But we'll also point out that in the Tampa trafficking case, for example, that's another suit. The plaintiffs there also went into detail about they had been how they had been forced to sign such contracts without even reading them. And this is ridiculous, but the judge there, Judge Thomas Barber, though he clearly sympathized, sympathized with the plaintiffs, said that his hands were tied and granted the church's motion to force the case into arbitration. So you can see that this actually does work sometimes as crazy as it is. So as compelling as Jane Doe one's narrative is here for why the court should ignore the contract, we must keep in mind that Scientology has been able to convince courts otherwise, convince the courts otherwise, exactly. So in 2002, Jane Doe, along with her seven-year-old daughter, accompanied her good friend, Lisa Marie Presley, also a Scientologist to the flag land base, that Scientology spiritual quote unquote, and training center in Clearwater, Florida, as well as to simply visit her mother. So Jane Doe's mother had been told by Scientology that she was unflat and needed to undergo high level auditing. Unflat basically means there's some problems with the processing. Therefore she needs to undergo high level auditing. Of course, at her own expense, they could only be administered at flag and that she could not leave until the process was complete. Jane Doe also accompanied Miss Presley to Disney World for a birthday celebration during their month long stay in Florida. Without this auditing and correction, Jane Doe's mother would be unable to advance to OT3, a Scientology level she pledged to reach to have spiritual freedom. Well, I can tell you that I got up to OT3 and not only did it lead to spiritual free, not only did it not lead to spiritual freedom, it led to my mind being cracked and that was the impetus for me waking up. So to the mother, um, you can actually skip that. It, it wasn't even worth it. <laughs> Until she underwent this correction, her mother was unable to take part in any courses in Los Angeles where she lived, a requirement to maintain her good standing. If Jane Doe's mother abandoned the course and returned to her family in Los Angeles, Scientology could declare her and expel her from the organization altogether. Jane Doe's father informed her that her mother was very stressed and unhappy, that the process was taking longer than expected, and that she felt isolated and alone for the first time in her life. This happens all the time, by the way, my friends, specifically at Flag. My dad would go do what's called um, six months checks in... Um, just to show you how ludicrous flag in particular is, my dad was on an, uh, a level called OT7, which is the second to the highest level you can get to in the cult. And they require you every six months to go checked up, get checked up on this level. This level requires you doing a minimum of six sessions every day, trying to get imaginary beings off your body. And it costs a fortune to go down to flag to do the checkup, to make sure your ethics are in. And they say it's a real quick cycle, maybe two weeks. My dad was missing from the family so often because he would be stuck there for months and be bitching and moaning about how the hell to get out of there. So it's quite common for people to become very frustrated like Jane Doe's mother at flag. Continuing on, Jane Doe's father informed her that her mother was very stressed and unhappy, that the process was taking longer than expected, a usual occurrence at flag, and that she felt isolated and alone for the first time in her life. Jesus, man, flag is, is like seriously the worst Orwellian mind control prison ever. It, just like we talked about on the free winds the other night, it's impossible to get out of flag and get back home. He asked that Jane Doe take her daughter with whom her mother was close to visit and cheer her up. So Jane Doe's purpose at flag was purely social and to provide emotional support to her mother. And it wasn't related to any desire to obtain services. This is important because she's arguing that 
even if you want to try this religious arbitration bullshit, the contract that I sign doesn't allow you to actually do that because you're going to see how it was signed under what conditions and um, it should be invalid, but you never know with Scientology. So flag has a high level of security, again, an understatement and visits to flag ordinarily require advanced requests that must be approved, followed by a visitation fee paid by the visitor. Scientology visitors to flag must also first have their auditing files sent from their home base before being allowed on the base. And the visit to flag must be associated with some services to be obtained at the base. Because of Jane Doe's friend's celebrity status, their pre-visit requirements were initially waived for Jane Doe. However, after several weeks at flag, Scientology officials came under scrutiny regarding Jane Doe's presence. Again, they make it so impossible. I remember I was, um, you know, going to go to flag and they have to get your folders here from Los Angeles. It can often take months for them to go through your folders, you know, to make sure everything's ready to go. The entire red tape of Scientology, particularly when you want to go to flag is, is absolutely incredibly insane. Jane Doe was told she must immediately sign the cult of Scientology flag service organization, religious services, enrollments, ap application agreement, and general release. That's a mouthful. Try saying that time. Sorry, <laughs> Jesus. Try saying that time 20 times fast. So this is going to be referred to as the agreement as we carry on with this. That's to permit her presence at flag. And again, that would be this, um, this contract right here. That's all it is. You're just basically saying that you agree to have your services at flag. And this is what they're using to try to derail this entire thing. So the defendants represented to Jane Doe that the form's purpose was simply to allow Jane Doe to remain at flag in Clearwater and that she was stating that she would not ask for a refund if she was unhappy with services, but she never intended to participate in services. So the defendants did not mention arbitration and Jane Doe was not given time, of course, to review the document. Jane Doe knew that any, and this is very true, this is why you sign, Jane Doe knew that any hesitation to sign or even fully read a Scientology document when presented, much less have counsel review the document with her, would be a violation of Scientology protocol. Absolutely. From her many years as a Scientologist, Jane Doe knew that such a violation would be met harshly and can result in her being assigned an unfavorable label within Scientology, such as a legal risk. To remove oneself from an unfavorable and literally life-altering label, she could be forced to take choruses costing thousands of dollars, i.e. ethics conditions, auditing to handle your transgressions, etc., or be subjected to hour-long interrogations and extensive investigations costing up to tens of thousands of dollars. Just ask Leah Remini what happened when she asked where the hell is Shelly Miscavige. She was put through the same auditing actions and, quote, repair. Flag officials also threatened potential punishment to Jane Doe if she did not sign the agreement. Officials told Jane Doe she must sign the agreement and stay to secure her mother's continued participation in the costly auditing sessions. Flag officials told Jane Doe she had to remain on base to bring her mother, quote, up tone or make her happy during her months long auditing so she would not end the sessions and leave. And by the way, my friends, you have to rearrange your entire life. My dad and mom had to work things out because how can you be away for months at a time doing all this shit and have your income and your life continue? It's a, it's a massive juggling act to be put through this, but this is standard procedure when you go to flag, particularly the higher up you go up that quote bridge. Jane Doe was told that either she or flag would be blamed for the loss of a wealthy donor like her mother. And that could result in punishment, including being given a non interpolation order, which is one step from being declared a suppressive person and being expelled from the cult. Jane Doe was told her presence violated flag protocol and had to have a solution for her unpermitted presence, hence this contract. Scientology forced the agreement upon her as that solution. Jane Doe was under immense pressure from flag officials and for her lifetime had been taught to follow and not question the cult's orders. Therefore, when flag officials pushed the agreement across the table, she understood, as I came to understand too, she had no other choice but to follow orders and sign the agreement. Jane Doe signed the agreement not only to allow her to remain at flag and avoid punishment for herself and her mother, 
but had no intention of obtaining services. That's a key point because without her attaining services and without there being a signature by um, flag terminals themselves, it's basically invalid. And this is what Jane Doe is um, fighting back with. Jane Doe knew that transferring services to flag would place her in jeopardy with the Colts Los Angeles location, which was her home base. Scientologists can't receive religious services at flag until they first receive their PC folder or preclear folder consisting of notes from all previous auditing sessions, i.e. intelligence gathering on the person so you can blackmail them. If Jane Doe had her PC files transfer from Los Angeles to FLAG and began receiving services at FLAG, LA feared her family, her family's future contributions would follow. So Jane Doe understood her PC file would, re, would be requested but refused, and FLAG officials recognize this as a likely outcome. Indeed, upon, upon FLAG's request of Jane Doe's PC folders from Los Angeles, her handler, Julian Swartz, and we've discussed him in previous videos, I'll link him in the description box, called her and, over her attempts to explain the situation, verbally berated Jane Doe for the request and refused to send the files as she knew he would. Just to kind of summarize this, orgs kind of compete with each other and it's quite a struggle to get um, folders to go to certain places unless they meet certain requirements. In other words, Jane Doe is not even getting services at FLAG, so it's not likely that Julian Swartz, the LA handler, would mail her folders from Los Angeles to FLAG because there'd be no reason to. So orgs often fight for PCs and their folders amongst each other. Continuing on, without FLAG's possession of her PC file, Jane Doe could not and did not participate in, quote, religious services at FLAG. No Scientology official ever signed or accepted the agreement. Jane Doe never intended to receive religious services at FLAG, and the FLAG officials who forced her to sign the agreement knew that crossing the necessary hurdles to allow her to receive religious services would be an impossibility. So the agreement was a fiction to create an otherwise unavailable solution, but one that would allow both her, her mother, and flag officials to avoid punishment. And even if it was not, and this is key right here, but God damn it, they still somehow managed to force these things into religious arbitration. So it's not guaranteed not to happen, but this is the key, right? Even if it was not, the acts that defendants now seek to have her arbitrate, that would be child sexual abuse, rape, and forced marriage, are not religious services subject to arbitration under the agreement, nor are they activities that may be subjected to arbitration at all. Exactly. Now, the next struggle that she had um, very recently is trying to serve the elf. And as we've covered in previous videos, this is almost an impossibility. And even the courts themselves, despite multiple servings, still consider David Miscavige in many cases to not actually be served. Let me just roll through here and see if you guys have any questions as we are passing the midway point here. All right, you're chatting amongst each other, having a good time. Let's carry on. So this is the second uh, update here. Jane Doe 1 attempts to serve the elf in multiple places. Will the court deem it enough? Well, sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Here's some pictures of the process server going to multiple locations to serve the, uh, the cult leader, David Miscavige. We have the infamous Odo over here. This dude needs to leave, man. He's been in way too long. You can see the pressure just wearing on every ounce of his body. And he's just been there forever and seems eternally trapped. It's quite sad. Anyways, um, so once again, it's a game of where's the elf as another plaintiff suing the cult of Scientology tries to hunt down the organization's ever reclusive leader, David Miscavige, to serve him a lawsuit. And again, in this case, it's Jane Doe. We've already covered that information. And I'm just going to show you some of the attempts to serve this guy. There's too many to read out all of them, but you'll get a flavor and see some pictures of how this process um, works. This lot, let me make sure I'm on the right page here. Okay, so this lawsuit is about the allegations about Potter, as we discussed, and that occurred several years before the Masterson attack. 
but it's not a criminal case. It's a civil case. And that requires that Jane Doe one, find the elf to serve him the papers that notify him that he is in fact in the defendant. So far that the court has determined that he hasn't been served. So other former Scientologists suing the cult have found this a difficult task. Again, that's an understatement. As Miscavige literally hides behind an elaborate barrier of security guards and locked facilities, as you're going to see. So we have in multiple cases that plaintiffs have tried to serve Miscavige through substitute service, giving the court papers to employees of the church. In the Baxter trafficking case in Tampa, this is another suit that's going on and is on hold. The plaintiffs were successful. There, as earlier this year, a federal court found that Miscavige was purposely evading service and they finally named him an official defendant. But at the same time, that case was derailed in favor of Scientology's internal religious arbitration. Unbelievable. So that's now on appeal at the 11th Circuit. And you can see how Scientology doing these various tactics causes all sorts of roadblocks, time consuming, it costs people lots of money, and it wears them down, which is the entire point of the suit. Remember we talked about how earlier Hubbard states that the point of the suit isn't to win, but to um, get the person to basically give up? That's what we're seeing here. So plaintiffs in Los Angeles Superior Court have had less luck as courts there seem unwilling to find that Miscavige is being evasive. Will this latest effort by Jane Doe 1 be enough to convince a court that Dave has been served? We're also waiting to see what another court says about similar efforts made by Leah Remini in her lawsuit. Again, it's all the same playbook. Leah's running into the same thing, and the court can be quite hesitant in saying that he's been served despite the incredible effort you're about to see, and sometimes they can be quite cold-hearted and actually rule in favor of Scientology's bullshit religious arbitration. So this is Jane Doe 1, just to summarize, suing alleged Sea Org groomer, Gavin Potter, and this is what she just went through about a week ago trying to serve this dude. Anyways, we thought you'd be interested to see the report by the poor process server who spent several days in September. Okay, so this would have been in September, several weeks ago. September, trying to find Miscavige at various places in Los Angeles, and that would include Celebrity Center and Scientology Media Productions. That's their ridiculous and elaborate studio that they've created from the old KCET campus. It's their attempt to be oh so Hollywood. So will this be enough to convince the court that Dave has been served by substitute service? Let us know what you think. So we're just going to go through a couple of these. So here we go. This is from about September 13th to the 22nd, I believe, where they the process server made multiple attempts to service this guy. And you can see the lovely Scientology people being ever so willing to help him out. So the first one is September 13th, 2.30 p.m. Let me make sure we're on the right page. Okay. So Scientology Media Productions, that's their bogus, like, you know, place. They're trying to, like, be Hollywood. So they bought the KCET Studios. It's kind of their headquarters now where it used to be Int Base. And it's right here in the heart of Hollywood. And it just pumps out 24-7 unbelievably useless um, Scientology propaganda that nobody even watches. So this is what this poor guy went through. So there's no front door entrance to a building at this address, of course. There's only driveways with gates in and out and a guardhouse in between. There's no call box, only a numeric keypad. I knocked on the metal gate by the guardhouse. That was your first mistake, my man. The door slid open and a Caucasian male uniform pack that stands for Pacific Area Command. Security guard asked how he could help me. I asked if David Miscavige was there. He said, no, what are you doing on my driveway? I told him that I was there to serve legal papers to the midget and asked, have you seen him? Does he work here? He said he does not work here. I asked if he knew where I could find him. And of course he said no. So there are some pictures of their studio. This is the guard that was ever so welcoming. That wasn't too bad. It actually gets worse as we go. Next attempt was at the infamous Scientology Celebrity Center here in Los Angeles, California, the following day at 3.04 p.m. Results. <clears throat> Let's see how this one goes. I pressed the intercom button at the front gate, and it rang and rang. It reset with a busy tone and began dialing again. I let it ring for about two minutes as the auto redial continued. I saw a couple and a woman with a dog on the property. I said hello, and they ignored me. There is a sign that says, 
Deliveries go to the rear entrance on Yucca Street. I walked to the side of the building on Tamarind Avenue. At the side entrance, there was a white male plainclothes security guard. He asked if he could help me. I asked who he was. He said he was a private security. I asked him his name. He said, Chuck. I asked, have you seen the elf? Is he here? He said, no and no. I asked if I should go to the delivery office. Maybe they can help me. He said they should say, or they will say the same thing. I asked if he knew where the elf can be found. He said, no. There's pictures of Celebrity Center where they just had a recent protest a couple of days ago. There's a picture of their intercom and they have cameras all around this place to see who dares press that intercom. So I'm not gonna read all these, but so we had another one that same day at Author Services, same results, they told him to go fuck himself. You can see the pictures here of Author Services. It's a shame they have such beautiful, expensive properties that are brainwashing facilities. Someday, when David Miscavige and the cult is held accountable, all those properties hopefully can go towards something that actually helps people, like maybe homeless shelters or something that actually serves the community. Same day at 4.45 p.m. This is at the advanced organization where they deliver the upper OT levels. And they also have ASHO on a street that's called L. Ron Hubbard Way. This is also known as Big Blue. So let's read this out. The poor process server approached the doors and was quickly met by a security guard who asked what I needed. I told him that I was here to see David Miscavige. Is he here? He said, no. I asked, where can he be found? He said, I don't have to answer that. And we know why you're here and you're not welcome. I'm asking you to leave. Well, hello to you too, man. I asked him, how about 1413 L. Ron Hubbard Way? Does he work there? He said, no, we know why you're here and you're not welcome. I said, you know that I'm trying to serve legal process and I'm not welcome. He said, yes, and asked me to go fuck myself. He asked me to, to leave. So there's the infamous AO. This definitely brings back memories of, um, I lost my mind uh, while on OT3 right about here uh, one day. And thank God I never have to go back and see people like this and like this. It's such a creepy ass street, man, if you guys have ever been to it. So we have one on September 15 at Author Services slash RTC. Same results, basically. And these are the pictures that they got. There's the intercom and there's um, a suspicious looking black vehicle with blacked out windows. September 15th, they tried the Scientology Celebrity Center again. Same results, basically. Go fuck yourself. Um, I'll leave the link in the description box to all these articles. So if you want to, you can actually read through these. But they're basically uh, one and the same. Again, here's the intercom for Celebrity Center. And since it's right out there in public view, a lot of people like to fuck with the cult. Probably pressed it when they were uh, protesting, maybe. But um, they've got, they actually have video. I don't know if it's on YouTube or not, but they have video of people fucking around trying to get people on that intercom. And some of the conversations are absolutely hysterical. September 15th, they try Scientology Media Productions again. Same thing, basically. There's the lovely lady. I mean, look at these people. Even in a, in a blurred photo, you can just tell that she's totally not happy being there. A victim of her own mind, trapped in her own mind, and has to respond the way that she does. But she literally looks like a prisoner, and those bars are very apropos to her situation. September 15th, we have another crack at ASHO. That's also AO. The infamous L. Ron Hubbard Way. And by the way, can you believe that they named a street L. Ron Hubbard Way? Same results. Um, no more. No, Miscavige isn't here. There's the infamous Odo. If a picture was worth a thousand words, this picture would say, get me the fuck out of here. I'm dying inside. And then there's the all blue building. Again, another one at Advanced Org. Same results. Almost done here. Notice their symbolism. They got the esoteric pyramid, the snake with the double triangle through it. We've covered those symbols in past videos. September 22nd, author services slash RTC. We might as well go ahead and read one of these because we're almost done. The results of the poor process server. I approached the site entrances of the building on Sycamore Avenue. There's a small patio-like area between the two driveways and appears to be part of the property. I spotted two men seated in there one with a walkie-talkie. I recognize them as the same two men from my previous attempt. I asked if they worked here. They both said no. I asked if the elf was here, and they said no. I asked if they've seen him here, and of course they said no. I asked if there was a manager. That's pretty bold. If there was a manager here or anyone in charge of the building, and of course they said no. 
I asked if there was a specific time of day when a freaking manager or someone in charge would be there. And they said, no, I asked if they were building security. They said, no, even though they were in security uniforms, I asked, so you guys just like hang out here. And they said, yes, well, at least you got one yes out of them. Nothing sus about that. Um, that's them hiding behind again, a literal prison for their own mind and literally their body. September 22nd, another attempt at celebrity center, same results. Oh, this one's actually worth reading because you can notice this man looking at those papers. So let's uh, back this up. This comes from Tony Ortega's reporting. And like I said, I'll be linking this, all of this in the description box. So on September 22nd, they go to CC here in Los Angeles. I approached the site entrance on Tamarin Avenue and was met by plainclothes security guard. It was Chuck again, white male, 65, 5'10, 195, gray hair, sunglasses. He said, what can I do for you? I explained that I was a process server there to serve the elf. And I asked, are you in charge of the property? He says, I'm hired private security. And I can tell you that he's not here. I asked if there was a manager that I could talk to. He said, they're not going to come out. I asked, can I go in? <laughs> he said, oh God, no. And he repositioned himself more between me and the entrance. Again, he's practicing his TRs. I explained, I'm not trespassing while serving legal process. He said, they do not want you on the property. I understand. I know your job. I announced that I was substitute serving him on behalf of David Miscavige with summons and complaints for two lawsuits. He backed up and would not take the documents, so I dropped them at his feet. And again, you can see him doing tone 40 intention while staring at the documents, but there's no way in hell he's going to pick that up. And that's at Celebrity Center. Then we have one more at Scientology Media Productions on the 22nd. And I believe finally, they just mail the freaking thing in. Another one at Media Productions. Finally, on September 22nd, they mail a copy of the documents to the midget at 4401 Sunset Boulevard, Los Angeles, California. $9.80 to mail this shit too, man. I hope they get that money back if they actually uh, nail this guy. So let me pause here because we're going to go back to the original document and we're going to talk about the third shenanigan. So to summarize... Jane Doe 1 has tried to serve, serve Miscavige, which you just saw. That hasn't happened. They tried to pull the religious arbitration scam strategy. She fired back on that. And now you're going to see the latest development. And again, this is the playbook, which they're already starting to use against Leah Remini's civil lawsuit. They're already starting to use it against the Jane Doe's civil suit, suing Danny Masterson for alleged fair game. And they literally follow the policies of Hubbard. So in real time, we get to see their playbook play out. But it is very effective not least because the judicial system, in my opinion, it's like watching, um, it's so slow and it's so set up to be, to work in Scientology's advantage because of all the rules and the your honors and I objects and, and motions and all sorts of shit that Scientology's a professional at filing to um, bury the person. So back to the original one that started this out. So now in a footnote, in an obligatory document, the cult was required to file this week. We get a glimpse of even more roadblocks it plans to throw at the Jane Doe one lawsuit. And they might also provide a preview exactly of what Leah Remini can expect in hers. Again, Tony called this like many months ago. I'm going to show you a clip of that here at the end. So buried in a seven page case management statement. The cult's attorneys reveal this upcoming plan for bogging down the Jane Doe one lawsuit. That's what it's all about. So this is what they say. Stand by for a drink of water. The party or parties expected to file the following motions before trial. Motions to compel arbitration. That's the first one we covered, which Jane Doe fought back against or is fighting back against. In the event this matter proceeds in this court, meaning if the religious arbitration doesn't work, the defendants, the Cult of Scientology International and Bridge Publications, they anticipate filing a demure, a motion to strike, and a summary judgment motion. So they've got four things there. The religious arbitration strategy, if that doesn't work, if they can't throw her in that, they have three other um, missiles to fire at this case. <laughs> they definitely come prepared, man. Similar statements were also submitted for RTC and the defendant Gavin Potter. Nothing was submitted, of course, on behalf of Scientology leader David Miscavige because he's not yet been deemed served with the lawsuit yet. And you saw what they've been going through to try to make that happen. 
and he still hasn't been deemed an actual defendant yet because he hasn't been served. So the Colts filed its motion for arbitration and probably thinks it's going to win it. Again, guys, that sounds impossible, right? But they do have precedents for doing this many, many times in the past, and it's just unbelievable. But just in case that motion fails, they have three other ways to bog down the lawsuit waiting in the wings, a demure, a motion to strike, and a summary judgment. We've seen a demure before in Danny Masterson's criminal and civil cases. It's a kind of pleading where the defendant, rather than arguing the truth of the allegations, is asking the court basically, so what? In other words, challenging whether the lawsuit should go forward, even if the underlying facts are true. So we've also recently seen a motion to strike in the Bixler case, where the Colt is objecting to references to its fair game retaliation policy being a part of the lawsuit. Again, we covered that last week, and I'll link that video in the description box. So, of course, he's seen some pretty dramatic summary judgment hearings. That two of them would be in the Laura D. Crescenzo lawsuit that were both unsuccessful for Scientology and, thank God, resulted in the church coughing up a big settlement to prevent trial. So, in other words, Scientology has revealed that it plans to use all the tricks in its arsenal to keep Jane Doe 1 from ever getting her day in court and they're going to try to do the same thing with the Jane Doe's uh, suing Danny Masterson, alleging fair game. And we'll probably throw a similar set of roadblocks at the Leah Remedy lawsuit. As L. Ron Hubbard instructed in what is literally Scientology scripture, the cult will make any case an expensive slog for former Scientologists looking for justice. Now, I interviewed Tony Ortega about 10 months ago. This is right after the first criminal trial of Danny had finished, and we're all waiting on pins and needles to see what's going to happen. It basically, um, nothing happened. It was sort of deadlocked, and then we had the second trial, and as we know, thank God, I mean, the amount of obstacles these women had to get over, going up against a Hollywood celebrity, the cult of Scientology, and rapes that occurred um, 20 years prior, that was a hell of an achievement and sets a precedent, hopefully, for Scientology, the court's not only learning about Scientology's tactics like we're talking about, but actually being able to finally start to see through them and get up to speed on how they work, because maybe we can finally get more justice with this Danny Masterson shit. So Tony Ortega, this isn't like a huge prediction, he's just reading their playbook, but I interviewed him, like I said, when we were waiting to see what was going to happen in the first trial, and we were talking about what might happen in the civil lawsuit regarding the Jane Doe's and Cedric Bixler, who's the husband of one of the Jane Doe's, in this upcoming civil lawsuit, which is scheduled for frickin' September 2025. So imagine the amount of time that Scientology has to throw way, way more roadblocks in this civil case. I asked him what he thought would happen, and I think he's right. What he's about to say here doesn't mean that the Jane Doe's are selling out. It's just, in my opinion, this is just my opinion, but it's a civil lawsuit, so it's about money for damages of being stalked, harassed, and fair-gamed. Their pets were allegedly poisoned. One of the Jane Doe's pets was uh, poisoned. It's these kind of tactics that, they, that they've been experiencing since 2017 when the LAPD finally began looking into these things and more gals came forward all the way up to present time. So if they took a big payout, I mean, Scientology is going to, what they're going to do is they're going to wait, um, do everything they can. And then if it does go to court, I would guess that they're going to offer them such a big payout that they're guaranteed to get that money. But if they try to take it to court, maybe they'll lose. So I don't think the women would be selling out if they took a massive settlement from the cult. They should get everything they can for what they've been put through by Danny and the cult. But at the same time, um, I know that they're, they really want to expose the cult. I don't, you know, they wouldn't uh, probably take a payout, but if any, if their past cases are anything to go by, understand the pressure that they would be under to not take the payout. And I don't think it would make them a sellout because they're going to make it hard uh, in, in every way where they might just be so frustrated after two years by the time the trial comes around and so <laughs> beaten down that they'll say, fuck you, give us the money. Um, we don't even want to take the chance of, you fucking us in court. Again, I don't think they're going to do that. I think these women in the civil lawsuit, they want to expose the cult, but they are super brave because this is just the beginning of what they're going to be hit with. So here's what Tony had to say uh, regards that. 
I seriously doubt there's going to be a trial of a civil case. You know, you what know do you mean Miscavige. by that? What do you mean? Well, you know how Miscavige is. What they'll do is they'll throw everything they possibly can at that civil lawsuit. Yeah. They've already said that the next thing they've, you know, they already tried the arbitration thing and that got overturned by the appellate court. So the That's next disgusting. thing, they, the next yeah. thing they say they're going to do is an anti-slap. An anti-slap motion stops everything for like a year. So they're going to keep throwing stuff at the case. And, you know, the Laura DiCrescenzo case is a perfect model. Mm -hmm. They they made her, she had to go through two different motions for summary judgment. That's like a full-blown mini trial, right? And she won both of those. And they, they went to the U.S. Supreme Court trying to fight, giving her records. I mean, that poor woman, she went wow. through nine years of garbage. Wow. They were finally a few days from trial and they had subpoenaed Miscavige to be in it. And he wrote a check and made it go away. That's, That's what, he, what does. he does. They always and, wait till the last minute. You know, Tony, it's the playbook. They drag it out. They had the money. And then didn't they do that with Debbie Cook as well? You know, Debbie Cook, you know, Debbie Cook had done like, like two hours of testimony. And they're like, and That's it was it. such a disaster. They paid her to end the lawsuit they had filed. That's cr that's, that's how they panicked do, they were. Yeah, yeah, that's what they. No, did. they just throw money at stuff and make it go away. That is, and they could they amazing. couldn't do that with Masterson. They they couldn't just settle it, and so they had to endure five weeks of testimony about how they treat people. There you go, man. You fucking nail it. He knows their playbook. It's not hard to figure out once you see it playing out time and time again. But um. Hey, these women uh, were already successful in enduring. I can't even imagine what they had to endure, not only to get this to come to trial, but to get the conviction of Danny. So if anybody can take it all the way and not take a payout, and I don't think they'd be wrong for doing so, it would definitely be these women. I only saw one question pop up, my friends. Um, so I'll take this up. If you have any more, please throw them in there with the question marks before we roll out. And then we'll be seeing you later tonight if you'd like to join us for the Q&A that usually happens on Sunday called Days After Dark, where we hang out and um, it's a little bit of a party game. That's been moved to uh, Monday, tonight, because I couldn't do it last night. And that'll be at 8 o'clock um, p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So, lady, what's going down? Uh, what do you think of Miscavige making an appearance at St. Hill? That's a good question. You know, Alex, uh, Apostate Alex has been covering that. Someone mentioned in the comments earlier that he is strategizing a way to serve the elf. I don't think they're going to be able to serve him. Absolutely not. I think that he might actually not show up and bail out either at the last minute or he's already been planning not to show up anyways. Now, I know that contradicts the fact that they have the big tent and everything. There's no way he would show up unless he knows for sure that he can't be served. He's obviously privy to everything that's going on in his world. He's going to make it untouchable and he's going to have every base covered where he can't be served. That would be the reason that he will show up and be there. I think if he thinks that there's any chance at all, security somehow isn't tight or he hasn't strategized enough, or maybe he wasn't planning on being there ever in the first place. Only time will tell. And we're going to only know when the event goes down. And I believe that's being held from November 3rd to November 5th. So we shall see. But he's never going to be served. If he was, uh, it would be a miracle. And I'll take back everything I just said. Flojo, what's up, man? Let's take up his comment because he knows this shit. It's not only their playbook, it's their policy. Exactly. We should go over some of those uh, to uh, blow drill if you want to and actually show people just how Orwellian, how strategized, and how um, anti-law, how they take advantage of the system, how much they really do that. That'd be kind of interesting to actually go over the policies. That's how the elf knows he has read the Scientology scripture. Yeah, exactly, ma'am. Okay, any more comments before we roll out of here? Let me just check real quick. I don't want to miss anybody. Well, I don't think he's like a... Oh, sorry, I grabbed the wrong one. I don't think he'll show. I think he's scared. Maybe he's scared. I, who knows, right? You know, he says he's going to show. All indications look like he is. And if he's going to do that, like I said, he will have every base covered and he will not be able to be served. I mean, he's not even going to be landing in an area where they're going to be able to get to him. I mean, what are they going to do? Drop a fucking parachuter in there? They're, he's going to be behind gates. Nobody can get to him, even if they wanted to, um, unless they broke the law and like, you know, ran across the grass and then get attacked by security guards. He's going to be landing in a place where nobody's going to be able to access him. 
And I think if he feels that there's any chance of that, he simply will skip out and make an excuse as to why um, why he can't. Lady, what, what's going on? That's what I thought, a no-show. Possibly. Again, it's all speculation. We shall see. It'll be interesting to see. Okay, my friends, we'll see you later tonight if you want to join us for a QA. and a And um, we'll do a short outro with uh, the few unwise words from the absolute dipshit himself that started all this madness. David Miscavige is just perpetrating the insanity. And uh, as always, please try to stay safe out there, stay sane, and definitely stay cult free. Now here is no one And you find in each and every case you're finding the phenomenon of entities, communications, space ships, other planets, locations, beingness in other states, and all of this, and you find this to be a consistent condition, you have fulfilled this definition of the mass universe.